Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome back to Tea Time Tales, where this week we're returning back to our beloved tabletop game after a couple of weeks of dabbling in the digital realm. Uh, I'll be back to digital land, digital world, uh, but I did want to uh, return to the tabletop game and get some games in once again. So, uh, what are we going to be playing today? Well, before I get into that, our usual caveats. Uh, this is a place where I test out experimental decks that are still baking in the oven. Not quite done yet. Put them through the ringer and see what uh, happens, <laughs> what the result is, what I need to change with the deck, or whether it is indeed ready to go. Um, so that's something we'll be looking at. Uh because it is Tea Time Tales, I am always drinking some kind of tea during uh, this time. Today I'm drinking a Jade Citrus Mint Tea from Tivana, which is quite good and very refreshing. <laughs> if if this uh, if the smell smell of vision technology was working, you could smell how f fresh my breath is <laughs> now after starting to drink it. Uh, so what else? Uh, so I try to keep it within an hour during the time of uh, lunch break. Uh, and I always mention that mistakes are probably going to happen. Just the nature of playing this game and so many triggers, especially when you're focusing on streaming and trying to be interesting. And then also reserving the right to scoop. Now that's going to be especially true today given the quest that I am playing. That I am going to use that heavily if need be. Because I really, you know, if things are going poorly and the cards are just not falling my way today, uh, I am going to scoop and try again so I can try to even if i don't win at least get a meaningful nice meaty uh run in against this very difficult quest uh let me check in on the chat um ransom man mentioning no face we got spoiled with your face <laughs> yeah i was debating whether or not to do it i i was worried it was gonna take up because i already have so much stuff going on on the screen whether it was gonna take up too much real estate maybe i can put it in the top right corner next time or something um <laughs> McDog saying, I enjoy my chocolate chip cookies pre-baked. Hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I, I remember the days when everyone enjoyed uh, eating the uh, cookie dough before it was baked, before the times when uh, all the warnings came out about how that could be dangerous. <laughs> um, let's see. Anything else? No, I think I just want to kind of get into it because uh, in case I do need to scoop, I want to leave some room to to actually play. So, let me go over the deck quickly and what I'm going to be playing and we can get started. This is a deck called Bardic Inspiration. Um, the reason for that is because this is a mono spirit deck using our new hero, well, relatively new hero, Bard Son of Brand from the Wilds R Rovanian expansion. And... Uh, Basically, this deck came out a little differently than most. Usually, I have a deck idea and I want to, and I decide to try it and then pick a quest. In this case, there was a certain quest I had in mind that I wanted to play, Race Across Harad, uh, because it is a quest that is very difficult and it's one that I hadn't played much since the Harad cycle came out. And so I was just thinking about it and, uh, trying to remember what deck I used and just thinking well how many decks can actually beat this thing so I was thinking about well you really need a kind of aggro deck because this deck this quest moves so quickly you just need to be able to have a lot of questing but then you also need uh some capable combat and so I was thinking okay what's a cool like aggro deck idea that I haven't seen and I was like well what would an aggro mono spirit deck look like that could you know obviously there's mono mono spirit decks are great at just pumping out willpower that's no problem but what would a deck look like in mono spirit that could handle combat like right away off the bat and so that led me to initially think of baragon okay well he's uh gonna be key for that to allow me to handle these enemies especially in race across harad they have some big enemies like this Urk Chieftain who keeps attacking you. And then uh, I was like, well, the only problem is in Mono Spirit, he doesn't have the buffs he needs or healing. So then I said, why don't I bring in Bard Son of Brand, who has this cool new ability that he can uh, 
when he plays an item attachment, he's basically has uh, the other spheres available to him. Um, and so with that being the case, I decided to bring in uh, stuff like Gondorian Shield. Now in Mono Spirit, Baragon can use Gondorian Shield, Hauberk of Mail. I have some uh, other stuff in there. I have uh, Lambas to help ready Baragon. Um, and the other key component is I included three copies of Elfstone. That's a card I've been thinking about more that I really liked when it came out and then I haven't played much. But in thinking of trying to make this aggro spirit build that could really get going quickly, uh, well, what I needed to do that is some high cost uh, attack characters like Glorfindel. And uh, another thing that Bard lets me do is bring in those elf stones so that I can get those people out quicker. Uh, so that's essentially the deck. I have Arwen, of course, again, because I want to get things out quickly. Arwen has uh, resource generation to help with that, um, card draw, and willpower. So that's essentially it. It pretty much relies on questing, uh, as you would with a spear deck. Baragon defends, and it takes a little bit of time to get your attacking online. You really need Glorfindel, and then I also have Overhill and Underhill Gandalf as the other key kind of attacker, and quester for that matter. Um, and uh, thanks to Baragon's threat reduction, you can mitigate Gandalf's extra threat a bit. But since you're trying to complete quests quickly, it's not as much of an issue. Maybe it's more of an issue against quests that do take longer, and then maybe you have to think about uh, chucking Gandalf at some point, or including more threat reduction is also an option. <laughs> So I think that's about it. Before we get started, uh, check in on the chat, see if there's anything important that I missed. Don't think so, so far. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Mono Spirit, my penguins are lulls is mentioning Lords of the Eldar and Kyrdin and Narya. Yeah, that's another option you can do if, uh, there's actually a lot of good uh, mono spirit options. I have one two-handed that's cured in Galadriel and uh, Eowyn that just puts up un ungodly amounts of willpower, but that one's paired with a combat deck. So the idea behind this one is really to get going faster than uh, most other mono spirit decks that I built with with the obvious exception of Caldera. I mean Caldera is designed to do that <laughs> um, so that's why I didn't uh, run her r just run a mono spirit Caldera because I mean that's the obvious answer to aggro mono spirit but uh, I, I try not to do the obvious here um, okay so we're playing a race across Harad this is, uh, in case you don't remember, this is where you have dueling quest stages. We're on 2B. Um, in order to get 10 progress, I need to commit my tamed Mumak. If not, then I can only make a maximum of a 5. Meanwhile, the orcs are over in their orc area here, which is right now the orc chieftain at 1D. Um, and to complete setup, I've chosen the Desert Oasis. Mainly because it's just low threat and low quest points. That's pretty much the only reason. And also because I tend to use the Mumak early on for uh, undefended attacks. And then just throw it there. The Oasis can help me heal that. And I've decided to put the Warg Rider here. Uh, in the staging area instead of the Orc area. You get your choice because I want to quickly uh, defeat... Uh, this thing instead of having it if you put it in the orc area then it allows the chieftain and the orcs to catch up more quickly which is not something I want to do necessarily uh, okay I think with that all being said I think we can go ahead and get started so oh and the reason for the name bardic inspiration is it's just a play on the hero name of Bard, and if you're familiar with D and D, <laughs> Bardic Inspiration is a is a certain skill in that game. All right, so we're facing five in the staging area. Um, in testing this deck, I, I ended up with a pretty good success rate. Uh, about you know two thirds of the time, I would win, which is fantastic. Uh, I will say, Race Across the Harad is one of the most difficult quests in the game. I think uh, for my money, 
it's definitely at least the most difficult in the Harad uh, cycle. Uh, so to um, have a win rate like that is pretty good. Um, but since I'm streaming today, that probably means I'm going to fail horribly. <laughs> That's essentially what that means. Uh, okay. Let's get started. Uh, I did take one mulligan because I wasn't happy with the initial hand. Um, and I ended up with... What I wanted to see, which is uh, kind of the ideal opener for this deck, is to have a two will, two coster, and then one of the key defensive attachments for Baragon. That gives you a lot of room to uh, to maneuver. And uh, the other option is to do unexpected courage and then a, a quester. So let's see what we want to do. So I think what we're going to do is start off first by playing a Handmaiden. It's going to drop our threat down to 27. And then I'm going to discard um, Glorfindel to gain a resource. I put a progress token there to mark that I used their ability. The nice thing about Glorfindel is you can be played from your discard pile, so that always gives you an option. And then I think I'm actually going to take the Unexpected Courage route on Baragond. I would like the... Uh, I would really like the option of, of having the shield this turn. But I think the redding is more important in case, like, another enemy pops out or something. So, uh, we can always put the shield on next turn. So I think that's what we're going to roll with. And then I'll show you our plan for how we're going to deal with the Warg Rider. Assuming everything goes according to plan. Which I probably won't now that I said that. <laughs> um, let's see... thinking for a second um okay so what we're gonna do now is we're facing down five we're gonna send two five and seven we'll go ahead and use this now to bump up to eight drop our debt down threat down by three rather to 24 and then reveal see what we get hmm yeah that was pretty much exactly the play that would ruin what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> ah, that's terrible. Okay, we'll roll with it before we... Because essentially I have kind of a foolproof plan. Well, quote-unquote foolproof to destroy this war rider, but that's given a certain level of hit points, which is now not going to be possible. Uh, but before I scoop, let's just see what happens. Uh, and so... We're now looking at a total of seven, so we'll make one progress. Then we'll go over here and at the end of the quest phase, discard the top card. We're going to see how much progress the orcs make. They're going to make two plus four. They're going to make six. So they're going to catch up to us next turn, pretty much. Uh, we're going to travel there. We have to exhaust the character. That's fine because we have Baragond. We'll ready him up. Uh, we'll bring down this guy to deal with him. Gonna deal with him sooner than later. Uh, yeah, man, this is gonna be rough. Okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, according to plan, my penguins are lol says. Have you ever played an FFG LCG? <laughs> yeah. Because uh, essentially, my plan is to take this undefended, and then with six, these two can kill the Warg Rider. Uh, but s now his hit points are up to, and his defense are boosted, so that's not gonna happen. Uh, if you're not at the same stage as the orcs, move attacking enemy to the orcs area after this attack. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this might be a scoop. This might be a scoop already, because that's pretty bad. Uh, but we'll so we'll play out one more turn, one or two more turns, see how it goes, and then if not, I'll quickly scoop. Um, so he's over here now. I mean, they were going to advance anyway, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Next turn. 
And that was five damage, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So we do have some card draw, which is good. Let's get that going right away, because we're a little light on options right now. Let's put a shield on Baragon, and then we'll save the rest of our monies. This guy's hitting for... When he attacks Baragon, he's going to be at 8 now. Man, it's rough. Okay, so let's go with 5, uh, 7, you got to go 7 to nothing. We gotta leave our Mubak back for attack purposes. Each ally gets minus one to everything. That really just affects this. And uh, and then this is, well, I wasn't questing with that. So it's just six to nothing. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This is gonna go away. Uh, the effect on that card is that I can heal four damage among characters. That does affect the Mumak, even though it can't be healed by uh, player card effects. It can, that's not a player card effect. The Ancient Mathem goes off, so we draw three. Okay, some options there, nothing too exciting. Still looking for my Gandalf. We'll leave this here just to remind ourselves. Uh, we'll do the Orc area. Uh, they were gonna advance anyway, so that was just a formality. And let's get our orc stages up. They move to 2C, which if the players have already defeated stage 2B, we have not. Uh, the, there's kind of a rhythm to this quest where you actually don't want to advance too far ahead of the orcs because you start getting punished big time for that. You also don't want to get caught flat-footed either. Uh, and so now... Uh, Essentially, things are going to work the same way, but the Chieftain is going to keep engaging us while we're at the same stage, but at the end of the quest phase, he's going to pop back to the Orc area to keep advancing. So, oh, I don't know why this guy is exhausted, because I did not exhaust him. So we're going to have to do with two, two attacks here, because um, we're going to intentionally grab this guy, because otherwise the Orcs are going to attack too fast. Uh, yeah. So first up, we'll defend with Baragon. Okay, nothing. So we'll reduce our threat by one using Baragon's ability down to 24. And I think we're going to just take this one undefended again. That's five. So this guy will still live. Uh, if he dies, then, well, hey, we had a reason to scoop. <laughs> he does not that's uh takes him up to six damage uh we can't damage this guy at all because of the quest stage we won't be able to until quest stage four uh the mumak is attacking for four thanks to this stupid thing baragon attacks that's five to three defense uh because of this is two damage so we're not close really unfortunately to putting a hurting on that guy, and we're gonna have to defend with Baragon soon. But we shall see. Let's do. Uh, let's let's play this out a little bit. See how it goes. We're we're not screwed yet, but we're on the way there. <laughs> um, I kind of want to get Baragon out so that I can kill this guy because I can't keep soaking these attacks. Let me just do some math here. So if I attacked for six, that would be two. That would still not be enough. Let's say I get Glorfindel into play. Then we're looking at eight, nine to two, nine to three, sorry, is six. That would be enough to kill it. Yeah, so we essentially need Glorfindel. The question is, what do we want to, what do we want to drop? so that we can generate enough resources. Maybe our Elrond's Council? Threat reduction is important, but survival is more important at this point. So let's pay five. I would have liked to get a Hauberk of Mail out, 
to uh, soak up some of the damage Baragon's going to take, but uh, we don't have that option right now. We need to get Glorfindel out. Glorfindel comes out. Uh, that's where Arwen's ability really shines. And uh, there's nothing in the staging area, at least. So let's send three, five, and seven. See what we get. Not an enemy, which is good. So we'll make four progress. This guy will pop back to the orc area. Uh, seven, wow, okay. So he's eight away. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible. It's totally possible with the card interactions that, uh, they, they could advance the next round, so we're going to have to make some decisions. But first, let's take care of the pesky matter of defending. First, let's defend the Chieftain. Either discard the highest cost attachment you control or assign X damage, where X is, I'm going to take, assign uh, 2 damage for these attachments, and let's put them on an Arwen. From what I remember, there's not anything that just directly damages someone without your control. Uh, Baragon takes no damage. She'll reduce her threat by one. Hey, Delaric in the chat. Uh, so we're going to have to defend... Yeah, we don't really have an option other than defending this with Baragon. So this guy, why he's so tricky against someone like Baragon is he gets plus X attack while taking a character with less will than, and the, it's, the boost is equal to the difference. So the difference is three, so this guy attacks for six. So normally Baragon's fine with the shield, but because of this stupid thing, that's why I was so upset at it, now he attacks for eight. Raise your threat by one. Sure, that's not the worst thing in the world. So Baragon takes two damage. Not ideal. But uh, we will attack back for eight. I forgot that I was going to have to defend twice with Baragon, so I won't have his point of defense. So 8 to 3 is 5. I think that's just enough anyway. Uh, yeah, he's at 7 hit points. So this guy's dead at least. This is going to go back to the staging area. And I did not travel to this one because it after you travel to it, you reveal the top card of the encounter deck. And I was in a position to handle that. Okay, next round. Let's see how this goes. There is my Gandalf. That's good. Um, just thinking about some things here. I want to save up for Gandalf. So I think the plays here, I can pretty much just do either a hauberk or a sylvan refugee refugee gives me more will the hauberk of mail will make baragon more secure i think i'm gonna go for the willpower right now we're up against five so the question here is do we want to send our move back do we want to try to quest through or do we think this is going to last one more stage? So if a combination of cards leads to the Chieftain getting five, four or more, then that's all she wrote. We lose. Uh, uh, the, the, the trick here is once you get to the next quest stage, if you're not at the same stage as the orcs, they uh, you have to reveal an extra card, which would be tough at this point. Um, and you also reveal another card to add to the orc area. So it's a big kind of chain of stuff revealed. Uh, there's a lot of effects that punish you if you're not at the same stage of the orcs. So, you want to, so ideally, I would want to have one more turn here at the same stage as the orcs. So let's risk it. <laughs> I mean, worst case, it doesn't go according to plan, and we scoop a play and play again. So we'll send three, five, and seven, and nine. And then... 
I guess we can send Glorfindel too, just to be safe. Let's send 12 to 5. Uh, because of the restriction, I can only make a max of 5. Because I didn't, I'm not sending my Mumak. So I can't quest through, even if I overquest. Okay, there's an orc there. So we're going to make exactly 5. Makes sense. And let's see if we're going to keep playing. Yep. Uh, so he returns to the orc area, and this goes up to 11. Okay. So our gamble paid off there. Uh, the reason he keeps coming down to me, I think I glossed over it, but that at the end of the encounter phase, he engages the player engaged with the most orc enemies, which could be zero. So in solo, he's always coming down to you. That's one of the reasons why. Uh, that's one of the reasons why Baragon is uh, a good choice for this quest. So we got a ton of enemies to deal with. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna travel to this thing yet. This guy has to come down. So I think I'm gonna have to leave the Eric of Mordor there for now. I want to clear out the staging area because there's more enemies coming. But uh, Baragond only has two readies right now, and I don't have any good defensive options. I don't have a way to kill him either, so. Okay, so we brought him down. The Chieftain comes down. Let's defend with Baragond. Okay, lower our threat by one. Defend again with Baragond. Nothing. Kill this guy with the Mumak. Stompy, stompy. Next turn. Okay, double Gandalfs. <laughs> That's fine. I One thing I should mention is I usually try to only have like two copies of unique characters, but because uh, Glorfindel is so important and Gandalf, I have three of each. And duplicates aren't too big a deal in this deck because Arwen can use them. Let me take off her special marker. For resource generation and Glorfindel can use duplicates to ready. So I think we're going to drop the big G. Considering, working, thinking. I could get a hauberk of mail out too if I want to push it. Yeah, let's do it. So we'll shed one to Arwen's resource gen. Two. Three, four, five. That allows us to pay for Gandalf. That allows us to pay for the hauberk. I wanted to push that out just because I'm a little concerned with uh, Baragon being at two hit points right now. Um, and so with this one, he at least gets an additional hit point. Okay, so we're up against five in the staging area. Gandalf's going to help us big time with both questing and combat. So if you read the description on Rings DB, I mentioned that these two are the key allies because out of the gate this deck has willpower and co and defense what it really needs is attack and that's where Gandalf and Glorfoot will come out the nice thing about both is they can both help with willpower uh, Gandalf because he doesn't exhaust to commit to a quest Glorfindel because he ready can ready if you discard a card okay so we'll send three we'll send five we're sending seven we have eleven to five that should be enough Um, yeah, that should be, I guess, I guess I'll send, uh, I'm just thinking if I hit some weird combo of cards that keeps surging, which is possible, so I guess I'll send Bard, even though I don't want to. Um, so this goes to the Orc area. Uh, we are at the same stage, so he's not going to gain Surge. Uh, he will count for... Threat. Because uh, while you're at the same stage, stuff in the orc area accounts for threat, which I th think I've been counting. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't make a mistake, but I think the orc area has been clear. That's one thing that's easy to forget. Um, so we go up to three, five, seven. We make six progress. That is going to be enough to advance us. I'll just put the one I need there. 
So we'll move to 3A. This is where the fun happens, uh, because shuffle the discard pile into the encounter deck, discard cards until an orc enemy is discarded, and add that enemy to the orc area. Let's hope we don't get to anything too crazy. Uh, okay, that's one of those guys. They're one of the weaker enemies. They can be really, really uh, annoying, though. Uh, which they're about to be annoying right now, because there's two of them with 20 engagement cost. Uh, okay, we flip here. Uh, chieftain still can't take damage. 20 progress to get through. And like I said, if the Chieftain is still at stage 2, then we would have to reveal an additional encounter card. Uh, now I've timed it correctly, so that's not going to be a problem. They're about to advance as well. We'll be at the same stage. We won't have to do the uh, extra reveal. Timing that correctly goes a long way to uh, succeeding at this quest, i found. So we'll dump that thing. That's two, six, eight, ten. I mean, it was just, I mean, he had enough on his own to advance. That was just elementary at that point. So we'll get at, get out 3C, move these guys over. Um, we haven't already defeated stage 3B, so that's not going to apply. That's basically just the catch-up me mechanism if you're too far ahead. And let's see. Other side, if we get to 4B, then each enemy is going to get uh, plus one threat, so it's going to make them catch up quicker. And still the same thing at the end of the quest phase. The Chieftain returns and does his thing, tries to catch up. It is now the travel phase. We're going to keep leaving that guy there because we have our hands full. We don't need to flip into another enemy. That's not a risk we want to take. This guy's going to come down. This guy's going to come down. We'll go ahead and leave him here because we, we already have our hands full. So I would like to kill both. Is that possible? No. Well, the Mumak can take out one, but I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to defend with Gandalf. I guess I could defend with Glorfindel. Yeah, that's an option, and then discard to bring him back. Okay, let's see how it goes. First against the Chieftain. Raise your threat by one, uh, but I also don't take damage, so it lowers by one, so that's uh, essentially nil. Attacking enemy gets plus one. Its threat is greater, so it's going to get plus two. That's still just five attack, though. Should I risk, gl risk Glorfindel so that I can kill both? I think yes. Fortune favors the bold. <laughs> okay, it paid off there. Uh, three to one is two damage. Mumak will stomp one. Uh, the big question here is who do we want to get rid of? I think a handmaiden. I don't want to get rid of willpower at this point, but I I don't want to get rid of willpower at this point, but I think it's important to get control of the board. So seven to two is enough to kill. Now, when did I play Gandalf again? I think it was this turn, was it not? Because I'm just trying to remember whether I, I did the extra threat game. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, this turn, I okay, so I haven't done the threat game. I'm good, no mistakes yet. <laughs> I've probably made like 10 already. Uh, okay, that's it for the round. Let's move. Now we'll do the extra two for Gandalf. Um, okay. Because I haven't drawn Elven Light yet, my card draw is really stalling, which is the one problem this deck can run into. Um, it would be nice to have Core Gandalf or some even more draw. Basically, I have three Agent Mathems and three Elven Lights. And usually that's enough card draw, but if you if you just don't see those Elven Lights, you start stalling out. It would be nice to have the option, but Overhill Underhill does so much work in this deck. I couldn't imagine really making that switch. 
Let's spin from these two to put out a swordsman, just so we don't have to uh, use up Bard's valuable resources. Because he's the one who can play those items off Sphere. We might be able to get Jubera next turn, depending. We do have a nice hasty stroke as an option. Uh, there's a few uh, shadows in here that are nasty, especially one that causes an additional attack. Okay, we're up against five. At this point, we do want to start getting ahead of uh, the orcs. Maybe not too, too far ahead, because there's still those abilities that punish you um, if you're not at the same stage, but we want to get a healthy lead on them, because uh, the orcs can usually catch up faster than... They can. They have some ways of making quick progress that surprise you, so it's, it's not wise to, to just assume that you can outpace them. So five, seven, nine, we're up to 13 to five. Let's go ahead and send the Moomac. 15. Um, let's see, what would I need to kill this guy? Huh, here and here. And then I could send Glorfindel. Is that the best move? Let's see, we would make a... Yeah, let's try it. I mean, I just I could send Bard for 17 to 5. Let's see how it goes. Okay, each ally gets blah, so that's minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So we're down to 13 to five, that's eight. Eight progress. We sent our Mumak so we can make more than five. Uh, we'll leave that there as a reminder. He pops back up here. Okay, that's a good, that's a whiff. So he only makes four. That works out well for us. Not going to go there yet. Still don't have control over the board. Control of the board to me would be no enemies except for the chieftain. But we will bring him down now. Let's get this party started. Defend with Baragond. Nothing. Reduce our threat by one. Baragon helps offset that threat cost. Uh, Baragon will defend against this guy. Uh, now, with this guy, each ally with less will cannot defend against the Uruk of Mordor. Um, thankfully, Baragon is not an ally, so it doesn't apply. Uh, okay, nothing. Uh, the problem is I'm not going to be able to kill this guy outright because this affected my stats. I forgot about that. But we can do three damage worth three and five yeah well that sucks but we can uh we can take up next turn hopefully next turn raise our threat by two we do have ancient mathem now so maybe we'll think about going there maybe we'll see uh i could play jubair this turn the only problem is I don't want to ditch either of these cards. Hasty Stroke is some good insurance right now. And I need the card draw from Mathem. So, let's uh, wait on Jubair. I'd like to get him out to, to help deal with defensive situations. But I don't think we have that luxury yet. 5, 7, 9, 13. Including Gandalf to 3. Fifteen to three. Actually, let me send the Mumac. Fifteen to three. I think that's a good amount. Um, I think that's a good amount. We want to get within 10. Essentially our plan should be to get within 10 and then next round we'll try to blow it out. That should be more than enough time. Yeah, so let's do that. 
Ugh, it's this guy. Pain in my side. So yeah, we're not going to be able to travel to the dunes yet with this guy showing up. And that is nine. Because we did send our Mumak. So we're up to 17. Very close to progressing. Let's see what the Chieftain gets. Another whiff, wow. Okay. Um, he's gonna come down. <laughs> I guess we should technically leave him there. Since, do we have enough? Those two could kill him. Glorfindel could kill him, but we just don't have the defensives. We need defense. We need someone to defend. Yeah, I guess let's just play it safe. I, I like to have another ready on Baragon by this point. Uh, two unexpected courages or a Lemboss to deal with these types of situations because you start getting the enemy build up. But I don't think I have that option. Uh, yeah. Let's just leave him there. He's at 40. Okay. I, I really want to kill him, in case you can't tell. <laughs> if the threat is greater than the will, it makes an additional attack. That was the one I was talking about. Let's hasty... Oh, that's not a damage. Let's hasty stroke that. So he will not make an additional attack... He does it deal damage. We reduce our threat. Let's defend this guy. He is does get plus two attack, so he's up to six. That's still not enough to get through our defense. Gandalf will be enough to finish off that guy. I guess I could have put some damage on him, but oh well. Next turn. Okay. Well, one, two, three, four. Four five. Got Jubair out. Let's get the refugee out. Might as well. Uh, I don't think we raised our threat for Gandalf, did we? No. So let's go up to 33. Alright, Jubair does give us another defense on the board, which is good. Uh, the extra hauberk's going to go on him, which is even better if we draw it. So we're up against six. We don't need to go too crazy here because uh, he's not going to catch up this turn. I mean, we could even turtle a little bit, but I think more than likely we'll progress through. But we can leave some characters up is the main thing. Let's send five, seven, nine, five, five, seven, nine, thirteen with Gandalf to six. That should be enough. Yeah, what are we going to get? If players are not at the same stage as the orcs, we they, we are at the same stage as the orcs. Uh, if the players are at the same stage, each enemy gets plus one threat until the end of the phase. So that's basically just an extra threat for him. And that's going to be an extra threat for him when he does his test. But not a huge deal. So we are going to pass through. So we're going to be on a different stage for like a turn. Which... Um, yeah, gives us a head start. Add River Heart, but it, it may lead to some penalizing effects as well. We'll see. Add River Heart into the staging area. Uh, we're going to shuffle the discard pile into the encounter deck and discard till we get an orc, just like we did last time. And that's going to go into the orc area. That's that guy. Other side. So now the Chieftain can take damage uh, because it doesn't. If you look at the other stages, it states the Urk Chieftain cannot take damage. That is gone now. But the Chieftain cannot take damage until... Um, while the engaged players engage with another Orc enemy, Urk Chieftain cannot take damage. So essentially you have to get him by himself. Which I think is a cool way to prevent you from killing the boss right away without... Um, like putting something super restrictive on there like a mean to player card effects or something I, it kind of works the same but okay so the river harnin we need to defeat it 
to win because this stage with 20 progress cannot be defeated until, well this is in play and that has 10 uh, but the kicker is you can't travel to it until you have 20 progress so essentially you need to, need to make 30 progress okay so at the end of the quest phase this is gonna pop up um, each enemy gets plus one threat until the end of the phase so this is five and eight Plus another whiff, wow. So this is going to go up to 16. And now that's gone. Um, okay. So the Chieftain is going to stay there. We're actually not going to have to worry about his uh, attack this turn. That is one side benefit. Uh, let's see. Actually, that should have been one additional threat for each, because we are at 4B now. Yeah, so this is actually two more for each of them. They still don't progress. Didn't make a huge difference, but... Well, now that we're alone, <laughs> Warg Rider, I think I can afford to travel to this Towering Dunes finally, so I can play this Ancient Madam. Famous last words. Uh, okay. Ugh. Not what I wanted, but okay. I could attach it to one of these guys. I mean, maybe I should. Attach to an orc enemy. I mean, they're already in advance anyway, and then I could just take on... Because essentially this would bump this guy up to 6 attack, whereas this guy, when he's attacking Baragond, is uh, like a, an 8 attack. Alternatively, I could defend with Gandalf, that's 5 to 4, because he doesn't get a boost at all. And then just kill him with everyone else. Do I even have enough? Three, five, six, eight, thirteen. Yeah, I have more than enough. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll just deal with the problem now. Okay, let's do that. L-O-T-R LCG t teaching you the perils of procrastination <laughs> when dealing with enemies. So I'll defend with Gandalf. If you're not at the same stage as the orcs, put Pursuer into play and engage with you. Okay. Um, so that's one damage on Gandalf because he's up to five attack. I always get a bit confused by these rules, um, but this one doesn't say to actually give him a shadow card. And this is a point where shadow cards have already been dealt. Usually it says put into play engage with you with a shadow card. So... Um, I'm going to assume he doesn't have a shadow card. So we'll defend with Baragon. No damage lower a threat by one and let's get this party started so he has three defense and eight hit points essentially so we need five uh let's see three defense and seven hit points yeah ten sorry ten damage to get through so that's five three that's eight that's ten right there kills them. This is going to return to the staging area. Two, three, four is not enough to kill this guy. But we put a little bit of a hurting on him. Next round. Threat goes up by two. Uh, okay. That's a good... Uh, hand right there a hand of two cards because <laughs> we got an extra unexpected courage on bear gun which gives us a bit more breathing room and we got 
finally our ancient math on this thing give us more options uh, we're gonna have three enemies to deal with at least next round possibly more depending on how this goes we're up against six let's do this three five seven nine eleven fifteen with Gandalf let's send the Mumak seventeen Should I send Glorfindel at this point? Kinda want to. 20. I would like to get through this as quickly as possible. So let's send... Maybe we're overextending ourselves here? Is that what we're doing? Because we want to be able to kill this guy. Okay, let's, let's go with 20 to 6. Okay, we got a little bit of breathing room. Oh boy, I don't like that one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. That drops us all the way down to 14. Terrible. So we make four here. We make a total of eight. And four here. Eh, not what I wanted, but what are you going to do? Ancient Mathem triggers. Okay, we got some good options there at least. These guys are going to progress no matter what, pretty much. Yep. They go through. Let's see what 4C holds. Uh, 20 progress for them. Uh, Chieftain cannot take damage while River Harnin is in the staging area. Uh, so that is what I mentioned the Chieftain could be taken out now, but uh, one wrinkle this adds is that first you have to travel to... Um, River Harnet to to be able to to kill him. So you really want to kill him so that he stops catching up to you, because um, he only has to do twenty and you have to do thirty uh, with the River Harnet. But you also have to get there first. So it makes this last part very tricky. It's it's one of the reasons why I really need to uh, hurry up and make more progress. I needed to make more progress on this stage. But uh, we'll see how it goes. We're going to have four enemies essentially to deal with. Because, yeah, this guy's going to come down. This guy's going to come down. This guy's going to come down. It's an orc party. Now, one wrinkle to keep in mind about the Fort of Harnin is... Instead of the usual returning and to the chieftain to the orc area and doing that based off the threat in the orc area, now it's based off the threat of each engaged enemy. <laughs> so unless I could kill these guys quickly, that's going to be very bad for me. Um, so I need to prioritize killing them. So first step, let's defend. Uh, plus one attack, that's still not enough to get through my defense. Lower my threat. Defend again against this guy. Nothing. Defend this guy. Exhaust the character you control. Boo. Ugh. That really hurts my ability to kill these guys. And now to just trying to think of how many people I I can only kill one of them really. Ugh. Maybe more. Let's see. Could kill one there. One there. I need to kill at least two, otherwise this is gonna get bad for me. I'm basically deciding whether I should take an undefended attack. Oh, no, I can't because that has to go on the tame Mumak. Ah, Yeah, that's not even an option. Well, I still might be able to kill two. Okay, so Jabir's going to exhaust to defend. 
I'll discard this so that will be two to two because of this. Uh, actually, I can't kill because of this thing. Ah, this is driving me crazy. Okay, so the most I can kill with three attack is kill this guy. Four, eight. Ah, yeah, this, this could potentially go very badly for me um, because I wasn't able to kill two there. Depending on what they flip for their orc area, I mean, if they flip like the five threat location, there's no way I can progress in time. I really need to make ten this turn. I can do it in three more turns. I essentially need a minimum of three more turns. So somehow I have to stop them from making that much. Ugh. It's not looking good, guys. It's not looking good because of that one treachery made a huge difference, I think. Okay, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> no time to scoop now. Um, okay. How do I want to play this? We have three resources to play with. We're going to discard here to get a resource for Awen and then pay right away to draw a card. And then... Let's pay two for the Swordsman. I could pay for the shipwright, but I'm saving one for test of will as potentially a way to get us out of a bad situation if a treachery would screw us. So let's do three, let's do five, seven, ten, thirteen, fifteen, nineteen total, twenty-one with that guy. That should be enough to get us through without committing too much more. Okay, there's the Harad Road. Now, the good news is that didn't <laughs> flip for this, which would have been in complete and utter disaster. It still may be. Uh, so we're going to make our maximum of 10. Uh, we're going to travel to this thing because it's ridiculous. Um, and then flip. It's a treachery. Ooh, that was a big whiff right there. <laughs> Just the difference of two cards, if those tri that had been switched, and it would have been the five for the orc area. Okay. We're still, this is going to be a very close finish. We're still in some trouble, but we'll see how it goes. Let's defend. Actually, let's, okay, let's plan this out. We need to kill these two guys. We need six. That's here and here. Bard and Gandalf, we need four. That is... Actually, Gandalf and Glorfindel kill him. We ready Glorfindel, and he helps kill him. So we can spare Jubair. Uh, he'll defend against... He'll defend against this guy. Threat is greater than will. He's going to make another attack. Ah! Okay. Uh, oh, and for my... I wanted to discard the shadow from this guy. Was why I did this. And it probably would have been better to discard that one. But I didn't know ahead of time. So he's going to make another attack. Which will be taken by Baragon. Which is nothing. Lower threat by one. Uh, I think I forgot to raise my threat by Gandalf last turn. So let's raise it by two. Uh, okay. Uh, we still have to defend this guy. No shadow. Nothing. Finally, we'll defend the chieftain. Plus one attack. Still doesn't get through. Okay. Let's put our plan into action. Glorfindel and Gandalf attack him. Dead. Discard Elven Light to ready uh, Glorfindel. Three and five. With those two is enough to kill that. Okay, okay. We got control of the enemies. The Chieftain's by himself. And now we just gotta hope for the cards to flip our way. 
Hope you guys are enjoying this one. This is a pretty tense game. Uh, it, this is a very hard quest, but it's one of the reasons why I actually like it. I mean, you have to kind of build a deck to beat it or play a super optimal deck, one of the two. But it, uh, it, it definitely usually always has a tense finish of some kind. So let's play Rivendell Blade on Glorfindel. That's, I included one copy of that for that purpose. Turn him into more of a killer. And let's see anything else? Uh, I think let's pay three for the shipwright, and then I'm gonna discard Elfhelm for a resource for the purpose of playing a test of will potentially. Elfhelm's great. Uh, but at this point, I don't think he's needed up against four, S five, seven, nine, twelve, five, seven, wait, five, seven, ten, thirteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-four. Yeah, we're kind of blasting this thing out. Okay, that has to go here. I could cancel it, but that's kind of a waste. It does raise the threat though. Should I just cancel it? Well, if I get enough progress, I can travel to River Harnin and try to kill this guy, so let's just leave it. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> this guy just became <laughs> an absolute beast. Um, these are limits one per enemy, but that's individual, so somehow, I guess, I guess it's fair if, if player heroes can ride two mounts that an enemy can ride two wargs. <laughs> But uh, this is just ridiculous. So he's at four, six, seven threat. Like eleven. Seven, yeah. For against eleven. Oh, now here's the question. So should I cancel that when revealed? Hmm. Because let's do this math. How much that would be? 13? That would be 3... Yeah, I think it's actually better if I cancel that one. So let's cancel that. I mean, the benefit here is if he goes into the staging area, he's not engaged with me. And... Um... Yeah, because this only counts the threat of each engaged enemy. The bad part is then he is a huge, huge enemy with big threat that's going to be hard to chew through. He is all by himself at that point, though. Okay, sorry, guys. I have to do a little bit of math, okay? Um, so he's at six defense and nine hit points for a total of 15. Yeah, I can't even get close to that. Six, nine, eleven. Plus, that's essentially thirteen. Maybe fourteen. Hmm. but it means one less turn of progress here from him. This is a tough decision. <laughs> what would you guys do in this instance? I think I'm learning, leaning towards having him return to the staging area because that essentially means a turn with not as much progress. Because I, I actually don't have to kill him to win. It just makes things easier. Six, seven... It is going to make him beefy. He's going to be hitting for 8. 
So Baragod could potentially die. But at that point, I'm at River Harnen, and I just need to progress through to win. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> at least there. Okay. I think I'm not gonna cancel it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for having him return to the staging area. A bit of analysis paralysis there, and uh, that means I'm gonna do nine thirteen. That's five and eight here, which means I can now progress. So I will travel to River Harnen. Okay, if the players are not at the same stage as we are at the same stage, each enemy is going to get plus one threat until the end of the phase. That actually does... Oh, I forgot to do... This would have actually been the card for uh, this, actually. So, sorry. So, that means no progress is made. That's the good news. The bad news is we still haven't seen what we're going to get for River Harnen, because its travel cost is reveal one encounter card. Okay, that's limit one per enemy, so he does not go. Like, you have a limit of two, Urg Chieftain. You can't ride three wargs at once, okay? So those are all going to come down to me now. Uh, I just have to make sure I didn't... So that was legit, right? He can return to the staging area. There's nothing that stops that. He just can't take damage. Can't have player card attachments or be optionally engaged. Yeah, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't go on him and return him to the staging area. And then it wouldn't count his threat, because it's only each engaged enemy. Uh, yeah, that's that seems legit to me. Someone can let me know later. Okay, the question is how we want to defend this. Uh, I say we defend the small guy first. Okay. Lower our threat. He's hitting for 5, 7, 8 against our 7 defense. So if he gets boosted by 2, then he's going to kill him. If he gets boosted by 1, he's 9 to 7, and Baragon is still alive. Oof. I mean, I could defend with Jubair, and he would die. But then that takes away my... Yeah, let's just... Uh, let's risk it. Return attacking enemy to the staging area after this attack. Okay. If that's how you want to play. If you want to play hard to get. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah, if you defeat this stage, you've escaped the orc. So you don't actually have to kill this guy. That's that's okay. So Baragon's going to take... 5, 7... 8 to 7 is 1 damage. Still alive. We just have this guy to kill. Which we will do. And we'll move to the next last round. Raise our threat by 2 again. For Gandalf. I'm hoping I didn't miss his threat at any point. If I did, it was maybe 1 round's worth. Which at this point, I've been engaging everything anyway. It doesn't make a huge difference. We're going to pay one with Arwen to draw a card. And uh, we have a couple of test of wills in the chamber. So our goal now is just to blast through this thing and try to win. So let's send three, five, seven, ten, thirteen, sixteen, twenty with Gandalf, twenty-two. 24, 26 versus 7 in the staging area. And we can even send Glorfindel just to be certain. YOLO! That is going to be added to the orc area, uh, but that's essentially the same. If we're not at the same stage, he gains surge. We are at the same stage, so that's just going to be 9. So that's a total of 20. Well, guess what, guys? That is a win against Race Across Harad. <laughs> Unless I completely boggled something at the end. 
Uh, this is cleared. And now that clause of stage 4B cannot be defeated um, while River Harden is in play. Well, it's not in play anymore. And that means this is now defeated at the stage. We didn't kill the Urk Chieftain, but that's okay. We escaped, and that's all that matters. Um, okay, so that was Race Across Harad using the Bardic Inspiration Agro Mono Spirit deck. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, as far as what the deck needs to change, honestly, not a whole lot. Um, I think because it's been tuned against a super difficult quest that I've had to make some changes along the way. Um, some things I changed. I had Thror's map in here originally, which I took out because after I realized it's basically useless against this quest. But if you play other quests, Bard gives you the option of Thror's map. Um, what else did I change? I upped the amount of copies of Glorfindel, which I mentioned. I added in Rivendell Blade for some more attack. I think this deck would work well against a variety of scenarios. The changes I would make. So if you're playing against a scenario that has a lot of threat raising stuff, then I might throw in more threat, uh, maybe like Galathrium's Greeting to deal with that because of Gandalf here. Alternatively, if you have those alternate copies of Gandalf, maybe you chuck him to avoid raising your threat one round and then just play him again. Maybe even using Elfstone. The only weakness of this deck is uh, if you don't get that Elven Light combo going early, early we saw it late here, uh, which was fine. And I mean, if you look at our board state, we did fine. It wasn't a huge deal because we got uh, Ancient Mathem out. I think we played two copies, if I'm remembering correctly. Maybe just one with some Elven Light. But if you, if, if I was wanting to ramp it up, I'm not sure what other card draw I could really bring into this deck. There's not a ton of options, really. So it's just kind of a matter of playing it out, and it's not too huge a deal. Anyway, go ahead and check out the deck on RingsDB. Bardic Inspiration is the name. Give it a like. Uh... Make sure you go and visit the YouTube channel and see any past videos you've missed. Uh, I'll be back next week. I don't think I've mentioned. <laughs> I think people have probably noticed that I've kind of switched from Fridays to Wednesdays. I mentioned on Twitter that uh, Fridays were not working out for me quite as well anymore. So this is a good time slot for me. Nice hump day stream. Um, I think next day I'll return to putting, uh, next week rather, I'll return to putting up the Twitter polls so you can vote on which deck I will play next time around. Until then, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.